Is Allah of Islam the same as Yahweh of Christianity? This is similar to the word Allah. For most Muslims, Allah is the only God and therefore must be the same God as the one that the Jews and Christians worship. Similarly, for some Christians, Allah is just another name for the one God of the universe. For others, however, the Muslim Allah and the Biblical Yahweh are contradictory and cannot refer to the same being, for, they say, how can the God of Muhammad be the Father of Jesus Christ? The question before us, then, is whether the terms Allah and Yahweh are just two names for the same God, or are they referring to different gods? And since there can only be one true God, the ultimate question is, if they are different, which one is the true God? Some scholars want to emphasize the similarities between Yahweh and Allah, and point to a common belief in a monotheistic God who is creator of all things, omnipotent and merciful. Both religions also claim that God has sent prophets to reveal his will and produce scriptures to guide our lives. However, Allah and Yahweh cannot refer to the same person for the following reasons. First of all, their attributes are different. In Allah's monadic oneness his attributes stem from his powerful will which, because it provides no basis for relationship, often promotes capriciousness. Also, since his power is more important than his other attributes, there is an unequal emphasis on power over his other attributes. In the end, a follower cannot know God or even be sure of the consistency of his attributes. On the other hand, because Yahweh is by nature a triune unity his attributes stem from his nature. The eternal relationship within the Trinity promotes love within the Godhead and extends to his creation. Also, since his attributes are based on his unchanging nature rather than his powerful will, all his attributes are equal and promote trustworthiness rather than capriciousness. This means that believers can know God and be sure of his attributes. Second, Christians understand the nature of God to be triune, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, which is the only way that Jesus Christ, as the second person of the Trinity, could die on the cross to pay for our sins. If Jesus were not God himself, then his death on the cross would be meaningless. However, Muslims deny that Jesus died on the cross and they reject the belief in his resurrection from the dead. Only a triune God, defined as one essence and three persons, could become incarnate and still remain God of the universe, and yet this is the God that Muslims reject. For them, Jesus cannot be God nor can God be a father, for he cannot have a son. Therefore, if Muslims reject God as the father of Jesus, then Allah cannot be the same as the God of the Bible. It is often said that there are three monotheistic religions in the world today, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It is also often suggested that these three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all worship the same God, though with different understandings. Is this really true? Is the Muslim Allah, revealed in the Quran, or Quran, the same as the God of Israel revealed in the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, and revered by both Christians and Jews? I understand that the Arabic word Allah is the equivalent of our English word God. Please do not let that influence how we answer this question. When a Muslim says Allah, he is referring to a specific being, just as when a Christian or Jew says God. They are more than just titles. Certainly there are similarities. Muslims even believe parts of the Bible, though they say much of it is corrupted or distorted. It seems as though Yahweh, the God of the Bible, and Allah may be the same. According to the Quran, Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth, Surah 35,1. According to the Bible, God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. According to the Quran, Allah created the first man, and from him created the first woman, Surah 4,1. 
According to the Bible, God created the first man, Genesis 1 verse 27, and from him created the first woman, Genesis 2 verse 22. According to the Quran, Surah 29 46, Allah and the God of the people of the book, Jews and Christians, are the same. Muslims believe this. The Quran contains stories and references to a lot of the people found in the Bible, including Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, even Zacharias and John the Baptist, and Mary and Jesus, using Arabic equivalent names. Many of these are very similar to what we read in the Bible. Some are taken from extra-biblical Jewish literature, such as the story of Abram and his father Terah's idols, compare Surah 21:52-69 and Jasher 11:13-12:35. The reason Christians say that Allah is not the same God as we and Jews believe in is because He's not. The God we worship is Yahweh, and Yahweh and Allah are not the same. You can tell by their characters and promises. For example, 1. Yahweh died for all of creation so that we may be with him in all eternity, and commands us to love others as he loves us. But Allah is said to hate creation, and only grants heaven to those who either follow their rules perfectly, which is impossible, or kills others in an act of war and hatred. Did God die for me? Allah. The Quran teaches that Allah did not, would not, and will not die for you, nor would he send anyone to die for you. In fact, the Quran teaches that Jesus did not die on the cross, but was taken up into heaven, and Judas, or someone made to look like Jesus, was crucified in his place. Further, the Quran teaches that there is no need for Allah to provide a sacrifice for sin because ignorance of Islam, not sin, is man's problem. The possible exceptions are apostasy from Islam and refusal to convert to Islam. Staying away from major sins, whatever those are, will automatically result in one's small sins being overlooked by Allah, 431. Yahweh, the God of the Bible, on the other hand, loves us so much he sent his son to die for us. This was determined in eternity past, before you and I were ever born and before any of mankind had fallen into sin, Jesus is declared to be the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13 verse 8. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. But even more than dying for us, God the Son rose from the dead, conquering sin and death, and he offers us forgiveness of sins and eternal life by his grace through faith in him. A key difference between Islam and Christianity is that in Islam, Allah sends his followers to die for him, whereas in Christianity God sent his son to die for us. Did God die for us? Only the God of the Bible sent his son to die for us, securing eternal life for those who trust in him. Allah. Unknowable. Allah is so transcendent, so exalted, that no man can ever personally know Allah. Jehovah. Knowable, Jesus Christ came into the world so we could know God personally, John 17 verse 3. Non-personal, Allah is not to be understood as a person. This would lower him to the level of man. Personal, the God of the Bible is spoken of as a person with intellect, emotion, and a will. Non-spirit, the idea that Allah is a person or a spirit is considered blasphemous and demeans the exalted one. Spirit, that God is a spirit was taught by Jesus Christ himself in John 4 verse 24. Unitarian, the Quran specifically denies that Allah is a father, that Jesus is the Son of God and the Holy Spirit is God. Trinitarian, the Bible reveals God as one in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All share equally the divine nature. It is obvious from these few comparisons that these two deities are not the same. Yet many religious leaders today, including the Pope, claim that the God of Islam is the God of the Bible. 
Once this idea is accepted, witnessing to Muslims becomes very difficult. How do you explain to a Muslim that his God loved him so much that he sent his divine, sinless son to die on a cross for his sins, when the Quran does not support these doctrines, in fact, contradicts them in many ways? The Quran teaches that Allah had no son, so explaining the divinity of Jesus and his death for our sins can only lead to confusion in the witnessing discussion.